Hello guys, welcome to my channel. This is the third tutorial in this course and in this tutorial we are going to have a look at two things. The first thing that we're going to check out is the MySQL Workbench Utility and the second thing that we're going to check out is the MySQL Command Line Client. Right, so this is the icon for the MySQL Workbench Utility and what I've done is I've created a shortcut on uh, the taskbar right so i've pinned the program to my taskbar so that i don't have to go to start and then type in the name of the program every time i have to access it and since we will be using it frequently i would suggest you to either pin it to the taskbar or you can create an icon on the desktop or you know you can proceed as is convenient for you so when i click on it i see something like this right so this is uh, my start page or the welcome page or the home page you can call it whatever you want to and uh, the mysql people they call it the workbench central right so this gives you three options the first one is sql development as you can see towards the left and the in the middle we have data modeling and then we have server administration right and uh, we are initially going to be interested in sql development because we want to learn how to use sql right these things are also you know really cool and we're probably going to check them out later on in this course or maybe in other courses but for the time being let's stick to this so you can see that it's written here that you need to open a connection to start querying right so in at the moment in the box below i see two connections one is connection one is the other one is mysql for excel connection and i'm going to double click on this collection connection one thing right and uh, when i double click on it i see this window in which i'm asked for my password right so in the last tutorial when we installed mysql we learned that while installing you need to create a password for the root account for the server right so that's the password that you have to use here and uh, i use my name as the password so i'll type in that and when i press the enter key or click on ok i see this uh, this thing right so this is the text editor portion you can call it and uh, you know this is the place where you're going to type in your sql queries and the output of your queries would be displayed in the output section you know right here at the bottom right and some other things that you can um, see are you know you see this object browser thing on the left side right so this lists all the databases that you have in this connection so i have sakila as one database streps is as another in test and world right and if i click on a drop down for world i can see the tables inside the world database the views inside the world database routines and views and routines are also database objects and we'll talk about them later on but you know tables we know what tables are right so if i click on the drop down for tables i can see how many tables are there in the world database so currently i have three tables one city one is country and one is country language and the world database we installed as a sample database uh, you know i mean i talked about in the last tutorial right and if you want more information about your city table then you can click on the drop down for city and you can see what all columns are there in it and if you have any constraints like foreign keys and you know if you have indexes or triggers for the table then you can check them out too right so this is too much information for this tutorial i just want you guys to be familiar with the look and feel of this application right it's an amazing application and we're going to use it quite a lot so let's just be comfortable with it you know from the beginning and uh, if you want to create a new tab for your sql file you can either press control t or you can go to file and then click on uh, new query tab right and uh, we're going to run sql queries by typing them in here right so there are two ways in which you can run either you can use the control combination control enter or you can go to con query and then if you want to execute all the queries that are there in the text editor section then you can press control plus shift plus enter if you want to execute the last statement or the current statement then you can press control enter right so we're going to check that out later on for the time being just know that you know this is the application that you have to use to type in your sql queries and then to execute your sql queries by connecting to databases right and uh, the next thing that we're going to check out is the my sql command line utility right so i'll go on start i click on start and then i'll click on my sql 5.5 command line client right and when i click on this i see um you know this application is asking me for my password again right so again i'll type in my name and press the enter key when i press the enter key i get this message welcome to mysql monitor and blah 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 you know commands end with a semicolon and you know we know all that right and uh, again you have this mysql word and you have this uh, arrow and uh, then you can type in your statements in here right so if you want to adjust the height or width or the background color of this uh, window then you can right click anywhere and then you can click on properties 
you can go to layout and you can select you know what height you want what width you want and what should be the buffer size and window position and stuff you can go to colors and you can adjust the screen background and you can go to font and you can select the size and stuff so you can do all that but mostly in this course we are going to use the workbench utility we're not going to use the command line client much but then you need to know how to execute sql queries using both right because certain organizations think that the workbench utility although it's amazing it's fabulous i just love it but some people think that it's not too reliable right so they would prefer using the mysql command line client and they would ask you to use it right so you need to know how to execute queries using both so anyway thank you so much for watching this tutorial i'm going to see you in the next one in which we'll discuss something interesting and important for sure and please subscribe to my channel in case you haven't already and i'll see you soon